What is great in life? To drive Soviet tank, to destroy fascists, and fire 122 millimeter gun. We're rolling with the list. I still think it's competitive, but my buddy Tank Rider pointed out that it does not have hidden checks. Well, that, that's salt in a wound. He's running the tourney. He's actually running as a ringer because we had an odd number of players. So he's got this really neat Panzerkampf group list from the Panzerlehr. He's running a trained tank list. As you can see, we are now in an open field. Very, very Soviet-esque, you know, maybe Eastern Russia, maybe, you no, not, that would be Western Russia, Eastern Europe, Ukraine-ish, kind of. We're playing free-for-all, and I'm just going to line up my tanks and just destroy him in any way possible. But with only two platoons, or, or three activations during deployment, I really don't have a lot of flexibility to respond to what he's doing. So he just sort of got to deploy everything he wanted on the board. But my objective here, from the beginning, is to not actually engage along a broad front, but to sweep one way or the other and just ignore as much as I can using the Soviet heavy tank armor. Because uh, 18, uh, front armor 9 is just, especially at range, I mean, the, the worst I have to worry about is, is like AT-11, especially from this list. He does get first turn, and he moves the Panzer Scout elements, the Lux, over into the Cathedral Graveyard and tries to bring in the Stugs right in behind him. But there's really nothing to fear regarding it. I mean, again, AT-11, front armor 10 at this range? <laughs> I have nothing to fear. Not really. I mean, it's not it's not a really great exchange because uh, he's he's getting a buff for range too. He takes a couple shots. Everything bounces. I move the KV ones over. No hidden chicks. Boo yeah, and get cover against the little rock wall here. And I decide to go ahead and take my anger out on those silly little tanks. I really hope Hans and Franz's friends are in there because I'm going to light them up like a gasoline-laden Christmas tree. Almost immediately, the feint starts happening as I begin moving the IS-2s from it, the flank they're on and slowly move over to the other side. I don't have a whole lot of tactical flexibility here, but we're just going to waddle over and light up a Stug because, you know, why not? Air support does come in, but it's really not worth mentioning. I mean, I send them after the infantry that are on my right. I'm just trying to dig them out, cause some casualties. I'm not expecting anything. Unlike on the other side of the board, beginning of his turn, the scout tanks, the Lux, immediately make a morale chest, fail to remount much of anything, and they turn around and bolt. The KV-1s are victorious, having unloaded like six shots into them. It was pretty nuts. But my buddy does have air support as the HS-129 flies in, gun-laden, decides to bail to the KV-1s. I mean, that, that's crazy. It's got like AT bajillion. Which, to be fair, the, the the gun planes in this game did not get any kind of nerf back, quite like everything else. But it's okay. We've, we're have we fearless! It's because we have vodka. We have lots of vodka rations. We're just going to start passing that around until they get back into the tanks. It's, it's going to be fine. The tank is fine. IS-2s, unmolested by anything on the right side of the board, even though there's some Panzer Force ninjaing their way towards the objective. I continue to waddle them over to the other side of the board, find his other tanks, light them up with double sixes. It's so great. And I destroy two more Stugs. I mean, you could convince me that it's a rate of fire one gun and they're moving, but you know what? It really doesn't matter. I, this is just one of those things where trained tanks, especially in the German inventory, isn't so great. KV-1s managed to find the other Stug and kill it too, just eliminating the whole platoon. More vodka rations. Vodka rations for everyone. And here we have a shot of the Panzer IV showing the temerity to admit the wrath of the Soviet heavy tank to kind of ninja their way forward. It's They're, they're hiding behind the the buildings trying to avoid getting shot. Soviet heavy tank crew decides not to get back in their tank, surprising even myself, but his HS-129 decides otherwise, coming in and managing to destroy another tank and bail another, leaving just the platoon commander there, but 
Thankfully, during the beginning of my turn, they'll all get back in. Not to let the wrath of Stalin go undelivered, the IS-2s cross the railroad tracks and we're going to take on those ninja Panzer IVs before they become a problem. They're, they're still locked up on that side of the board. They can't leave it so long as we've got enemy forces there. And the KV-1s, now having been reprieved from having to destroy anything because they did destroy everything that was in their way, start moving to the center of the board so that they can divert over towards the IS-2s and support them or just charge off and take the objective on that side of the board. And here you can see kind of the broader situation. We've got a group of Panzer IVs behind the building here, and we have the captain and his CIC over here. I can't let the IS-2s do anything. They can't get too far away from the objective. And as the shooting from the IS-2s manages to be somewhat ineffective, he decides to go all in, sending the Panzer IVs out into the open. They're going to go gun to gun, muzzle to muzzle against these guys, even throwing a little bit of a blanket out there for a little bit of modesty for the unfortunate raping and pillaging that those Huns are going to try to deliver. But isn't that really like the pot calling the kettle black? I mean, you got the Huns and the Mongolians calling each other you know, barbarians. It, it's just food for thought. They take several swings, miss everything! <laughs> or what they miss, it bounces. And in turn, I decide, you know what? Soviet heavy tank doesn't need to move, and just turns around and just shoots everyone. <laughs> he lost the entire platoon. I, I ended up moving the KV-1s over there because I figured, you know what? Instead of going for the objective like some kind of pansy, I can have a tank fight! Alright! So I just moved the KV-1s over there to take care of business. And they didn't need to shoot anything. It was completely unnecessary. B2 does show up, but like I, I'm lamenting, it's kind of pointless. I mean, they might be able to dig them out sooner or later, but not now. So instead, I decided to send him after his tanks. I figure, you know what, let's add insult to injury, and yeah, they, they don't do anything. But with the other tanks taken care of, all we have is his commander and his buddy trying to run towards the objective. And you know what, we're just not going to deal with that. So we send my entire formation after of tanks, planes, and everything. And yeah, it goes about as well as you can imagine. Planes don't do anything, of course. But the IS-2s light them up. I mean, they're just taking everybody's lunch. Everything that hits bounces. Everything that the IS-2 shoot at dies. I can't seem to miss. I mean, it might be a rate of fire one gun, but man, they are making every shot count. To, to quote... Poor tank rider at the end of this, he he did mention that he was supposed to play a ringer, he's supposed to not give like the most competitive game, being the TO, but I just ate his lunch. And to be fair, part of that's just the meta. Uh, if you bring a heavy tank list to a 1250 point scale tourney, you kind of have to assume that they're not going to spend all the points to get everything in the kitchen sink, and to just assume that if they run into a heavy tank, you just... You know, you'd have the equipment to take care of it, or you don't. And a lot of people just aren't. They're just going to throw more medium tanks at the problem. But this has been an Ouchie's Bat Rep, and thank you for watching.